It is the district final here from Liberty Benton High School. This is WOSN coverage of high school boys basketball action. Tonight, Shawnee taking on St. Mary's in the district final, Division II district final here this evening. Alongside Nate Garlock, I'm Patrick Kamler. The tips of the game tonight brought to you by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial services needs. Visit yourstatebank.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The Indians, Rough Riders tonight, Nate, and uh, this is a rematch from earlier this season, which saw Shawnee win 69-57. It's difficult when you get to this level to beat good teams twice. That's what Shawnee's going to have to face if they want to come away with another win and advance to the regionals for the first time in a couple of years. But going back to the tips of the game, what are we looking for for each side to come away with a win tonight? Yeah, starting first for the St. Mary's Rough Riders, you know, they need to pressure the ball. Thursday in the district semifinal, Shawnee had a very difficult time moving the basketball up the floor against Napoleon. They came out, they pressured him. Shawnee doesn't have that traditional point guard that a lot of teams look for to bring the ball up the floor. They kind of uh, rely on their on their big guys to do that. And so they need uh, – St. Mary's needs to get out there, pressure that ball, see if they can't cause a few turnovers. One, and they also need to do limit Shawnee to one-and-done possessions. Beckett Berkey is so good down low. Time after time and game after game, he gives himself second, third, fourth opportunities where he eventually will cash them in. St. Mary's has got to keep the ball out of his hands underneath, let the one shot go, and then get back on the other side of the floor. And then they have to make someone else beat them. Shawnee is no secret. The Berkey brothers, it has been their show since day one. They have role players on that Shawnee side, but you want them to be the guys that have to beat you and try to limit the damage that the Berkeys can do. For the Shawnee Indians, three-point disruptions. St. Mary's came out firing against Elida in a big win in what, as you mentioned, was a rematch. It's hard to beat a team twice. Elida had knocked off St. Mary's. St. Mary's came out. They put them on their heels right, um, right away. They hit seven three-pointers in that game. Evan Aikman seems to have no range whatsoever. He will fire from anywhere on the floor, and he can make those. So Shawnee needs to make sure that they're running guys off that three-point line, not letting them have any space to set their feet. They also need to limit the turnovers. Shawnee gave the ball up a lot to Napoleon, a lot because of the pressure that the Wildcats gave them, and that caused a, a lot of uh, defense turning into offense for Napoleon. They can't allow St. Mary's to do that tonight. And then finally, they need to adjust to adjustments. And what I mean is what we were just talking about. It is hard to beat a team twice. Coach Hegemeyer has been doing this a very long time. He is excellent at making those adjustments. Shawnee came away with the victory back in January, but the Indians should be looking at this last game against St. Mary's and Elida. Elida knocked off St. Mary's. They went back into the gym. They went into the film room. Coach Hagemeyer made the adjustments, and Elida just couldn't adjust to those. Shawnee should anticipate the exact same thing tonight, but they got to find a way to make sure that they make those adjustments to what St. Mary's throws at them. Those are your State Bank tips to the game. When we return, we will have a tip-off between the Indians and the Rough Riders. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great night here on WOSN. Welcome back. Getting ready for the start of tonight's district final between Shawnee and St. Mary's. The first quarter is sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. And the timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Starting lineups being announced. The usual suspects for both teams out there for the Rough Riders and the Indians. And something uh, I'll be curious to see, of course, as you've been looking and uh, whether you've watched St. Mary's a couple times or maybe this is your first time, uh, they don't tend to go very deep down the list. They go about six deep effectively. And Shawnee doesn't go that much deeper. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out as far as the fact that Shawnee throws a few more bodies out at St. Mary's. Yeah, and I think, you know, that obviously will definitely come into play. And then, you know, you always have to watch the foul situation. You know, for St. Mary's, a team that only has six guys who's played in every game this season, you know, they clearly are very disciplined on defense. They don't pick up a lot of fouls, but if Shawnee is able to get them into that, that could be a problem. Noah Payne with the elite drain cleaning three-pointer can't get it to fall. Shawnee with the rebound. Beckett Berkey bringing it up the floor. 
And there's what you were talking about at the beginning of the game, or in pregame, Nate, that they have the bigger guys uh, do a lot of the point work for them. Yeah, Shawnee's going to have, you know, Trevick and Beckett will bring the basketball up the majority of the night. It's not that traditional point guard, but that's why if you throw pressure at them at times, they can struggle with that. And they were really predictable, especially in their passing on Thursday night as you see the step back three go up. Trevick missing that shot by Alex Goldsberry there to put it back in. And that might have partially blocked Evan Engstman in there on the stop, gets the rebound and gets it back to the other side of the floor. Now looking underneath, this is Turner. Spinning around, off balance, around. Offensive rebound by St. Mary's, and Berkey coming back with the block. Great work underneath. Shawnee is able to match the length of this Rough Riders team, which is not something that a lot of teams can do. Elida really struggled with that, and that is not going to be something that should be an issue for Shawnee. They have a lot of big bodies that they can throw at this Rough Rider team, especially underneath the basket. Both Berkey's 6'5 and 6'4, Trevick and Beckett, respectively. And there, that pass snapped out of the sky by Turner. Working around. This is Payne in the corner to Haney. Get back out. Elite drain. Three-pointer is around the rim and out. Pashon with the rebound. Until St. Mary's has come out. They are trying to pick up right where they left off in the semifinals. They want to get things going from behind the arc. The two misses here early from Payne. Shawnee, though, not able to take advantage. Around to Dominic Lynch, who has it to the far side. Still no score on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Now cutting inside. Lynch can't get it. No finish there and a foul. That will be our first one of the night. Evan Angstman picks up his first. You know, I think that's going to be something that Shawnee really should try to focus on tonight is seeing if they cannot get some early foul trouble to a couple of these players from St. Mary's. You know, if you can get players like Angsman or Turner in, into some trouble early, St. Mary's doesn't really have anybody that they can sub in that would, you know, kind of go player for player for that situation. And, you know, Shawnee's one of those teams where they have the ability to go inside and, and bang with people. Then if the officials are going to call it tight, that's really going to be an advantage for Shawnee. Goldsberry knocks down both Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws, and it is a 2-0 lead for Shawnee early. And now the Indians force the turnover. Beckett thought about cutting it inside and said passes it off. This is Lynch. And now Lynch gets it back. Lynch is actually the second leading scorer for this Indians team. He averages just under 10 points a game as the majority of that offensive heavy lifting is done by Beckett Berkey. Uh, blocking foul. That'll go against Noah Payne. That's his first. It will on the floor, so that will... Result in an inbounds pass by Shawnee. Trevick passes it in to Beckett. Beckett puts up, partially blocked. Jace Turner getting his hands on it. It will be St. Mary's basketball. And I'll tell you, these uh, none of these Berkey guys are probably used to getting their shots blocked. No, they haven't gone up against too many teams that are able to match their length. But especially with Angsman and Turner down low, the big difference is going to be that St. Mary's likes to have those guys play up top. Angsman, oh, he likes to play from behind the arc. Turner will go down low. But traditionally, they play away from the basket. Owens passes it off underneath. Haney gives it up off the glass and in for Jace Turner. All knotted up at two on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Now here's Beckett taking it up. That's high off the back iron. Angsman thought about the long pass. Works it back around, and Angsman has it, gives it up. We're coming up on the halfway point of this Lima Chevrolet Cadillac first quarter. Spinning, turning, hook shot by Turner, up and in. Talked about Turner. He can play inside as well as outside. Having a lot of success on that inside here in the early going. He just backs down Goldsberry that time and just a little easy hook shot. Shawnee looking for their first field goal. They might get it here. That one partially blocked. So the Rough Riders... Getting in and disrupting shots here in the early going. Here's Cobain Owens cutting it inside. Turner trying to get their offensive rebound. They do control the basketball, however. Angsman has it. Cuts inside. Right hand. No, but he's fouled. They're going to 
get that on Goldsberry. So that is a fortunate call for Shawnee as it looked like that might have gone against Trevick. And I think Coach Triplett would much rather, if he had to pick one player to pick up that foul, it wouldn't have been Trevick this early. Absolutely. So that puts Angstman at the line. 82% from the charity stripe. Hits the first Lee's free throw. Second Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is up and good. Six to two. St. Mary's with the early lead. Go ahead, You Nate. see Tate Bender had checked into the game during that last stoppage. Tate's played a ton of minutes on uh, this year for Shawnee, and he's somebody that can come out. He can hit the three-pointer if you need him to. He plays great defense and also second on the team from the free throw line as well. So he can help this team in a lot of different ways, but Perky coming out finally getting a basket from the floor. Elite drain three-pointer drained by Berkey. You're probably going to hear that a few times tonight. It's six to five. St. Mary's. 321 left in the first quarter. Here's Engstman with a long elite drain three-pointer. And St. Mary's fans have seen him do that for a while now. It's nine to five. That's what we were talking about during the pregame. There is no range for Evan Engstman. He loves to play from deep. As long as he has some space, he can put it up. Here's another one. Elite drain three-pointer. That one is off the back iron and a foul. They're going to call that against Dominic Lynch, his first. And passes it in, works it around. Turner has it near the top of the key. And look at the thread the needle there. Instead, it is off of Turner's hands into the hands of Shawnee. Into the hands of Tate Bender now, who checked in recently. Now Lynch has it. Two and a half remaining in the first. Shawnee right now just trying to find us some rhythm on offense. Bender quick pull up, doesn't get it to go. Turner with the rebound. Here's Angstman on the other side, working one on one against Lynch. Nice spin move, can't finish. Lynch to Berkey. Berkey had it knocked away instead, gets it into the hands of Pachon. Pachon takes it up and in. A great series that time for Shawnee as there was a lot going on. Started off on the defensive side. Dominic Lynch just doing enough to disrupt that shot from Anksman. Then after a scramble, Pachon doing a nice job of following and finishing. There's Owens trying to cut inside, has it knocked away. Now Lynch running the floor for the Indians, passes it off. Berkey for three, elite train three-pointer, no good. And a timeout called by Dan Hagemeyer. Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will take it as well. Minute and change remaining here in the first quarter. We'll be right back here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Seven, nine to seven. St. Mary's on top of Shawnee here. A minute 43 remaining in the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac first quarter. Coach Owens Hague. gives it up. Go ahead. Saying Coach Hagemeyer was not happy with his team's effort at the end of that last possession. You could hear him all the way from across the gym telling for his team to get over there. He needed to. Get them into that huddle, get it talking, and it must have worked as Angstman was able to drive and get that one in. Angstman takes it strong against Ojo, puts it in 11 to 7. Ojo, nice pass going the other way and blocked by Turner. And the foul will be called. I think they are going to get Turner for that. So that will put. Tate Bender at the line, 82% from the charity stripe this season for two Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throws. First one is uh, up and good. As we mentioned, Tate Bender, the second leading free throw uh, shooter on this team, averages just over 82% from the charity stripe. Yep. Really, as you look up and down the list, second Lee's free throw is no good. 
Jinxed him a little bit. Sorry for that. <laughs> Tends to happen. <laughs> a pretty good uh, crew of free throw shooters up and down this Shawnee roster. Really not too shabby over on the St. Mary's side of things either. So both teams, fair amount of confidence, I would say, in their lineups if this comes down to free throws. Pull up by Anxman in the paint. No good. Berkey with a rebound. Good defense that time by Ojo. He was able to stay with Anxman and just cause enough issues. But then a turnover on the other end. Shawnee has got to limit those and is already unofficially the fourth here of the game. Pashone with a little bit of a foot shuffle before he took it in. Called for the travel. So as you mentioned, Nate, the turnover will give it back to St. Mary's. 34 seconds left in the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac first quarter. And the ball off their feet, back to the hands of Shawnee. Three on one. Berkey puts it in. Great decision by Beckett Berkey, too. Didn't want to try to do anything fancy with that. Just wanted to make sure that he got the basket. And get, got Shawnee within one here as the quarter comes to a close. Owens controlling the basketball. Gives it up to Payne. Ten seconds. Working it inside. Finds Turner. Up and in. Three seconds. Berkey, cross half court, puts it up. No. That's the end of the first quarter. It's a 13 to 10 lead for St. Mary's. The second quarter coming up when we come back. You're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. And Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delvis, and St. Mary's is our free throw sponsor. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken, where home style happens. Getting ready for the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac second quarter. Three-point lead for the Rough Riders over the Shawnee Indians. Shawnee a little bit of a Slow start to get their first field goal, but they have uh, been able to keep pace with St. Mary's, and now they'll control the basketball, trailing by three as we get started with quarter number two. All the scoring for the Rough Riders in that first quarter were done by two people. Jace Turner had six, Evan Anksman had seven, and with those seven points, uh, Evan Anksman now over a 1,000 points on his career as he has seen a lot of good basketball, three-pointer on its way. Berkey with the rebound, cleans it up underneath, couldn't get it to go following the Goldsberry three-pointer. Get a foul on Tate Bender. That'll be Tate's first. Foul is on number 14, Tate Bender, his first, team's first. The crowd really wanted Goldsberry to get what would have been his second made three-pointer of the season. Turner looking for Anxman, finds him, top of the key. Gives up in the corner, three-pointer, elite train, trained three-pointer by Noah Payne. It was only a matter of time as Noah Payne had been off the mark on his first couple. And right back to St. Mary's, and Anxman puts it up and in. Just like that, it's 18-10 to 10 St. Mary's. This is what Shawnee cannot afford to have happen. They don't want to fall behind and have to try to shoot their way back into this one. St. Mary's is so good with making those adjustments. Elite train three-pointer knocked down by Beckett Bertke. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will take it as well. You're watching high school boys basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Minute 20 gone by in the second quarter. St. Mary's in the midst of a 7-0 run right now. Make that a 7-3 run. Berkey hitting that three-pointer to put that down, and the ball immediately coughed up by St. Mary's. Yeah, some miscommunication that time as Alex Haney was trying to cut to the basket. I never saw the pass coming his direction, so fortunate play for the Indians as they try to see if they can't get this back to a one-possession game. They can do so with a bucket here. Goldsberry around. Trevick to Beckett. Beckett cutting inside and a blocking foul. 
The shot will count, chance at a three-point play for Berkey. You know, it takes, it takes a little bit of courage to want to step out when you see Beckett coming down in the lane. And that's exactly what happened that time. It was just a little bit late on that slide as he came off of his defender and tried to get set before Beckett was able to get there. Not happy with the call was Noah Payne as it was his second, but just didn't quite get his feet set in time and Beckett now with a three-point opportunity. Lee's free throw is no good. 18 to 15, St. Mary's on top and now with Noah Payne having to go to the bench with two fouls, Brennan Steger checking in for the Rough Riders. And as we mentioned, something to keep an eye on will be the foul situation. Turner with a foul, Anxman with a foul. And where do the Rough Riders go? As we mentioned, there have only been six guys that have played 23 games. And it's not as though there's a couple of the guys on the court, or on the team rather, that have, oh, well, they've played 16, or they've played 11, or something like that. Like, it goes down three, four games really quickly. We'll see how that works out. Meanwhile, Steger just come in. Anxman, elite drain three-pointer is short. Corralled by the Indians. Great defensive uh, possession that time for Shawnee, and then a little bit of a lazy pass on the other end. Shawnee fortunate to keep that possession. But sometimes this is what happens. You know, I, I've watched a lot of the, the Indians games this year, and this can happen when you rely so heavily on two people, specifically even one in, in Beckett Burke. You can get a little predictable with your passing and trying to force it to them. And when Shawnee does that, we see passes like we saw there and then easy turnovers with that anticipated pass coming. Beckett trying again and then puts it up and in. And then sometimes it just doesn't matter. When you're that good, <laughs> you just make things happen. And that's why you try to force it into him. And Beckett that time made that one happen on a second opportunity. Three-pointer didn't go. No problem. Cut it inside. How about that cut inside? Dick Steger behind the defense and in. Nothing fancy that time. Steger just doing a nice job working with the opening. The defense had their back to him. And it was a great find on the inside. And he was able to finish. Steger going for the steal. And then fouls Trevick in the process of an elite drain cleaning three-pointer. Not quite sure. I don't know if Steger just kind of panicked in that moment as... Trevick got around it, but I mean, he just grabbed a hold of Trevick and tried to hold him down. It's an easy call for the official. First, Lee's famous first chicken free throw is up and good. Trevick in the scoreboard for the first time tonight had 12 points in the district semis. Second, Lee's free throw is up and can tie the game with another one hit here. You know, with as much focus as goes on for that Berkey brothers, you know, Trevick only averaging just over seven points a game coming into this game, but he's such a disruption and he's a threat whenever he has the basketball. You have to pay that much attention to him as he knocks down all three free throws. There really aren't a lot of scenarios where a 6'5 guy is ignored when he steps onto a basketball <laughs> court, and that is uh, Trevick Berkey. For sure. Here's Anxman. Nice fall away. Doesn't go. Lynch had it. Lost it. Now Steger passes it off. Last touch by Shawnee. Great defensive effort that time by Haney to stay down there, make sure his hands got active. He's able to knock that one away. And St. Mary's fortunate to get this one back. Rough Riders inbound. Coming up on the halfway point of this Lima Chevrolet Cadillac second quarter. Here's Owens attacking the basket. Doesn't get it to go. Shawnee coming back the other way. Berkey passes it off to Lynch. Gets it back in the corner. Elite drain three-pointer just a bit long. And now Berkey has it. Beckett working inside. Long pass. Gets it to Lynch. Lynch cuts in. In trouble. Kicks it back. Elite drain three-pointer long. Rebound by Turner. You don't see that very often out of Shawnee as Pashon is known for his three-point shooting ability. He just pushed that one long. Berkey also off the mark. So, unfortunately, empty possession for the Indians. But Another Saint one. Mary, yeah, St. Mary's not able to take advantage on the other end. That one by Alex Haney is long. A little too much juice on the court. All the three-pointers are long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, these kids know what they're playing in. They know they're playing for a chance to move on to Bowling Green and get into that sweet 16, get ever a little bit closer to uh, to Dayton and that state 
uh, state semifinals and state finals, hopefully. So that definitely does play into some effect as we're seeing just a little bit extra, but nice follow as the tip-in goes in. I feel like Berkey and Pachon <laughs> yeah. should each get a point for that one. <laughs> like Berkey and or Pachon tipping that one in, and that will put Shawnee back on top. 2.43 remaining in the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac second quarter. Just for anybody keeping score at home, looking up on the scoreboard, they gave that one to Pashon. Offensive foul. Shot won't count. Go ahead, Nate. What were you saying? I was saying, saying Pashon got the, got the point, so he now has four. And then you see what Dominic Lynch does so well. He is the least afraid of contact of anybody on that floor. And he stood his ground knowing that contact was coming, wanting to pick up that offensive foul. A great play by Dom. That was the first on Cobain Owens. Team's third there for uh, St. Mary's. And Shawnee doing a great job of racking up fouls. Here's Pachon once again for Elaine Dreen. Dreen three-pointer, but right there is Trevick Berkey to clean it back up. You know, some people say it's better to be lucky than good, but luck really has nothing to do with it. You know how to put yourself in position, and that's what Trevick did. He put himself in a position where if that ball came off, he would be able to do something with it, and it ended up right in his hands. Didn't even hesitate on the putback. And Berkey on the other. Uh, Nick Pashone, actually, they will get for that. And that will be a foul on the floor. So completely different from what I was thinking would be the call. <laughs> I had foul right. I had everything else wrong. Anxman with the basketball gives it up to Turner. Back to Anxman. A late drain three-pointer off the mark. Corral, St. Mary's. Another opportunity, and it is Owens knocking it down. The late drain three-pointer, and it's a one-point lead now for Shawnee. Third three-pointer of the night for the Rough Riders. They are not afraid to pull the trigger on that. We talked about the three-point disruption. St. Mary's, if they have space, they will take continue to take that shot all night long. Trevick, three-pointer no good, but Goldsberry there. Back door, cleans it up, can't. Second opportunity, this is Beckett fouled in the process, and he will go to the line. And that's a big one, that's going to be the second on Anksman. A great job underneath by Beckett Berkey to stay with it, give himself a third opportunity. So Beckett Berkey at the line for two leads. Famous recipe chicken free throws. First one no good. Dominic Lynch will come back in. Pashon will have a seat. St. Mary's coach Dan Hagemeyer choosing to keep Angstman in. For the final 115. And a turnover. Getting the pass. Here's Lynch attacking off balance. Shot blocked back into the hands of St. Mary's. So the Rough Riders dodging a bullet there as that turnover could have been a quick two points for the Indians. Said St. Mary's has it as we come under a minute. Now it's interesting that Coach Hegemeyer is leaving Anksman in. He trusts. Trust him as he's on that floor. He's had a lot of time, a lot of experience. But if I was Shawnee, if they get the ball back, I'd be going right at him trying to see if they can't pick up that third foul. Turner with the basketball now. Owens with 33 seconds. St. Mary's might be playing for final shot. See if they can take the lead heading into halftime. Anxman cutting inside. On the elbow, no good. Lynch with the rebound, and now Shawnee with a chance to take the last shot in the half. Down to 10 seconds. Ball in the hands of Beckett Berkey, six seconds. Call in traffic, right. down to three seconds. Long elite drain three-pointer, got it! What a shot by Beckett Berkey. You know, it looked at a time like maybe he wasn't sure what the time on the clock was, but he was under control that entire time, knew exactly what he was doing, got to his spot, and drilled it. 27-23, Shawnee at halftime. When we come back, we'll have the State Bank halftime adjustment. You're watching High School District Final Boys Basketball Action here on WOSN.
Welcome back, 27-23, Shawnee at halftime. The halftime adjustment brought to you by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial services needs. Visit your statebank.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Shawnee with a four-point lead, able to extend that with a three-pointer at the buzzer and what has been a closely contested game. It's everything that we've been, that we came to expect in this one. Um, both teams head to the locker room, in the locker room right now. What adjustments are we looking at, do you think, for each side if uh, Shawnee wants to keep their lead and if St. Mary's wants to come back in this one? So for Shawnee, you know, I, I think for them the big thing is going to be they have to s the limit the turnovers. You know, that was something that we talked about in the pregame. They were bitten by the turnover bug there in the first half. They had seven turnovers. And fortunately for them, St. Mary's wasn't able to do a lot with those turnovers, but you do not want to keep playing with fire. You do not want to continue to give St. Mary's extra opportunities because if you do, eventually those are going to start going down, and that's when they're able to get back in this game. Or We saw at one point um, it, it early in that first half where a two-point game ballooned to almost a 10-point lead just like that off of turnovers back-to-back by Shawnee. So they've got to be, protect the ball a little bit better. They've got to be ready for the pressure that they're going to see from St. Mary's. I, I expect the Rough Riders to pick that up in the second half, and they just got to be ready to handle that. On the other side for St. Mary's, they got to stop falling in love with the three-pointers. We talk, we've talked about it. It, has, it is a strength of theirs. They're not afraid to take that shot, but they were doing so well getting the ball down on the inside. Jace Turner was going to work when he especially was being guarded by Goldsberry. They had the room and the space to get things going on the inside, but they got away from it. They got the ball back out around the perimeter. They were taking those shots, and they just weren't connecting. They got to pick their spots when it comes to those three-point shots, get back on the inside, make the defense have to get it a little bit tighter, and they'll get some better looks from behind the arc. That's your State Bank halftime adjustment. And when we come back, it's a great one here to this Division II District Final. Shawnee with a 27-23 lead over St. Mary's. Third quarter action when we come back here on WOSN. Welcome back, getting ready to start the third quarter here of this Division II District Final. Our quarter sponsor is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. And our three-point sponsor tonight, Elite, Elite Drain Cleaning, make Elite Drain Cleaning and water damage professionals. Your first call when you need water extraction, help with clogged drains or carpet and upholstery cleaning. Find Elite Drains on Facebook. Third quarter ready to get started. 27-23, Shawnee on top of St. Mary's. On the web insurance scoreboard, Patrick Kamler, Nate Garlock here with you as we begin the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac third quarter. And uh, we talked about what teams, both teams need to do adjustment-wise as we come out into the third stanza here. And we'll see how that unfolds. St. Mary's with the basketball, trailing by four. Yeah, I'd like to see St. Mary's come out and immediately try to get something going underneath, see if they can't get Turner going again uh, towards the basket. He's set up down there, but they keep using him to come up and try to set that high screen. Ball into the hands of Turner. Working it inside. Anxman giving it to Turner. Now he kicks it back out. Here's a drive in by Payne, and through the defense and in. Strong take along the baseline for Payne. He just did not hesitate. As soon as he had that one, had a little bit of space. Nice, fast first step and able to finish. There's an elite drain three-pointer by Pashone. That one no good. Getting it back is Lynch off balance and fouled. He will head to the line. And that's going to be against Owens. That is his second. Foul situation getting a little interesting. Noah Payne, Cobain Owens, Evan Anksman, all with two fouls each. And we've talked about it a couple of different times now. But that bench for St. Mary's is just not that deep. So with seven minutes left to go here in the third quarter still, well, something to keep an eye on. As, you, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, that second least famous first be chicken free throw goes in. Uh, Rough Riders do not use a deep bench. They only go about six. Very seldom have uh, they've gone much deeper than that. And the foul situation, you know, you don't want to harp on something, but at the same time, you have a number of kids that haven't seen a lot of 
action this season at all, and now you might find yourself in a position where you have to rely on them in a district final. It is something of an advantage for Shawnee. Turner's hook shot does not go, lift the rebound. You can tell St. Mary's came in and tried to make that adjustment. That's back-to-back -back possessions to open this quarter where Turner has gotten a touch in the paint, just hasn't been able to do anything with it here as the Shawnee defense is held tough. Berkey gets his man up, comes inside off the glass and in. Easiest basket that Berkey's had all night long. At 17 points for Beckett, it's a 30-25 Shawnee lead. Turner now guarded by Beckett, working inside. Throws that one up and in. Great toughs make by Turner as he just continued to move, moved his feet well, get himself in position, and just muscled that one up and in. That's the first one on Beckett. Teams first, so chance at a three-point play here by Jace Turner. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is good. Turner 69% from the charity stripe this season. And brings the Rough Riders to within two. Here is Beckett working inside. Ball blocked. Last touched by, it looks like Jace Turner got his hand on it. Pass shown to inbound. Gets it to Lynch. Goldsberry. Gets it to Lynch. Lynch dribbles in. Elbow jumper, no good. Ball is caught. Rebound corralled by Payne, and he'll bring it up. Guarded by Lynch. Lynch playing uh, the whole court. Dumps it off to Turner. Turner gets it to go. And we are tied. And St. Mary's went right back to what was working so well in that first quarter. Jace Turner has touched the ball every single possession down in the paint. He's been able to come away with back-to-back -back baskets as they were able to tie this one up. Offensive foul. That momentum is turning. As you can feel it going back towards that Rough Rider bench. They are getting up. They're getting back into it. And that is the second on Beckett Berkey. So they're not going to want to get... Uh, risk him having to pick up any more fouls either. He's going to have to pay, play a little bit more conservative here through this third quarter. We talked about the foul situation for St. Mary's. Berkey, as you mentioned, with two fouls. He has 17 points. He has been the bulk over half of the Shawnee offense. So if he is someone who gets into foul trouble, that's going to change the calculus a bit as well. Hanksman getting inside to Turner, and Goldsberry will pick up his second. Shawnee's going to have to find some sort of adjustment. they got to get help underneath. Jace Turner right now is just dominating underneath there. If it hadn't bid for that foul by Goldsberry, Turner probably would have had an easy lay-in. Hanksman will inbound. All tied up at 30 on the Web Insurance scoreboard. All alone to Turner. Little too high off the glass, off the rim, and no good. Going back the other way. Beckett attacking. Has the ball slapped away and a foul. And that might be on Noah Payne. It is. That's his third. Payne not happy, as you can see. He's a little frustrated with that whistle. He thought he got all ball, but the official was right there. That'll put Berkey back at the line. First Lee's recipe, chicken, free throw, no good. Berkey really struggling from the line tonight. He is now 0 for 4 on the season. He has been a 77% uh, free throw shooter. Metzger Financial Services timeout by St. Mary's. 429 remaining. We'll take it as well. You're watching high school boys basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Coming back from the timeout, second chance at the Lee's Recipe Chicken free throw for Beckett Berkey, and he knocks that one down. Shawnee 
Shawnee with a one-point lead, 31-30. 4.24 remaining in the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac third quarter. See that tough defense that Bender's known for. And then Trevick comes up with a block. Trevick with a block on Anksman and then aggressively pursuing Haney. And that's going to be the first on Trevick. Fourth on the team. So St. Mary's will be shooting foul shots for the rest of the quarter. And we'll see if they take advantage of that in their approach here in the final 403 of this third quarter. Working it around the perimeter. Turner was posted up there for a bit. He's posted up again, only outside the paint this time. St. Mary's showing good patience, moving around. You can tell they want to get it to the inside. They finally do. Turner way underneath the basket, has to give it out, and the ball is out of bounds. You know, that time, Shawnee gave St. Mary's space. If they wanted to shoot the three-pointer, they could have but they are trying to make a very conscious effort to get that ball on the inside, and that time it didn't pay off, and it didn't a turnover. Shawnee basketball with 32 remaining. A one-point Indian lead. And tipped away almost to the other side by Corbain Owens. And Goldsberry just cannot be a, that predictable. As, that was an easy pass to be able to jump. Shawnee fortunate to keep possession. And Lynch trying to cut that inside, but slapped away by Steiger. Here is Owens taking it all the way. Nobody picked Cobain Owens up in transition. He was able to get all the way in and put St. Mary's back on top for the first time since the first quarter. Someone was probably saying stop ball, stop ball, but no one stopped him. And St. Mary's back in the lead, 32-31. Too much traffic on one side right there. Beckett does a nice job of adjusting. And right there to Lynch to clean it up. Back and forth we go, 33-32. Lynch put himself in good position. And we'll get an easy rebound, an easy putback. Steger has it. Looking for Turner, gets it back. Elite drain three-pointer, no. I think that's the first attempted three-pointer of this quarter for St. Mary's. Yep, you're right. That's the first time, and that's also the first time they've had a possession where the ball hasn't been touched on the inside. In the hands of Goldsberry, working it around. Trevick for three. Got it. Elite train three-pointer for Trevick Berkey. A smooth three-pointer for Trevick. He now has six on the night. He's been relatively quiet. But when he gets that basketball in rhythm like that, he has a chance to get his feet set. He is almost automatic. Now Payne working against Lynch, passes it off. Shawnee fans around us getting loud. 1.36 remaining in the third quarter. Anksman cutting inside, shot blocked. And a foul. Travick Berkey did a great job of coming in as Anksman went up, but the official saying too much contact on the inside on that rejection, and Anksman's going to go to the free throw line. Called on Dominic Lynch. That's his second. So it must have been happening underneath then. I think everybody thought that the initial whistle was on Trevick in the rejection. It seemed to be the initial thought. First Lee's free throw is in as Alex Haney Checks in. Anksman, second lead, famous recipe chicken free throw is good. Two point lead for the Indians, 124 left in the Alima Chevrolet Cadillac third quarter. Fast moving game so far, as neither coach has wanted to stop uh, their team's rhythm too often. Just a minute left to go here in this quarter. From the corner, no good. Trying to get the rebound was Pashone, slipped through his hands. 
think Pashon was trying to get the put back before he hit the ground. and Just too much going on, took his eyes off the basketball. Angstman has it, now trying to pass it in. Beckett with the steal, using those long arms to control the passing lanes. Now Pashon taking it up, double clutching in. What great body control by Nick Pashon as he went in. He knew the defense was coming, but that, cl that double clutch that he took when he was still in the air let him be able to have a good position to get that one off the glass. Without a doubt, now St. Mary's will try to cut this to a one-possession game to head to the fourth quarter. 15 seconds, Anksman, step back, passes it off. Now here's Owens attacking the rack, loses control, and out of bounds on Shawnee. So it looks like Shawnee had their foot on the line when they touched the basketball. So St. Mary's getting something of a break there. The Riders will maintain possession with 7.7 seconds left in the third quarter. Ojo checking in for Shawnee, coming in for Pashon. See, they want Ojo to come in They with that extra length on the floor here for this inbounds. Turner has it. Five seconds. Kick out. Stagger. Downtown. No. Rebound by Berkey with one second. Heaves it at the end and almost has back-to-back -back three pointers to end quarters. Eight more minutes to go in this one. It's a 38-34 lead for Shawnee. You're watching District Final High School Boys Basketball here on WOSN. Our fourth quarter sponsor is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. Our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Ready for the fourth quarter. It's a 38-34 Shawnee lead over St. Mary's in this Division II District final here from Liberty Benton High School, and we start with a turnover. Engsman, Stagger, blocked by Berkey. A great job by Trevick Berkey after a sloppy inbound. As you saw, pressure come immediately from the Rough Riders, but Trevick was three on one. He didn't try to overcommit, held his ground, and was able to get that rejection out of bounds. Looking forward to a thrilling final eight minutes as Engsman, turnaround shot, gets it to go. We saw Turner go to work down low. This time it was Angsman's turn. And he just got that one in off the front of the rim. Pashon able to keep that one from going back into the hands of the Rough Riders. Looking inside and corralled by Payne. St. Mary's able to force another turnover. And yeah, Goldsberry tried to force that pass to that in, to the inside, trying to get it to Berkey. Here's Turner working inside off of Goldsberry. Step back. High percentage shot is good, and we are tied at 38. If I was St. Mary's, I would just say, hey, every time first look's going to be the inside, let's let Jace Turner go because he has had nothing but success when he's been one-on-one. -on -one. Turner with 13 points. Here's Pashon. Got it. What a great job. Giving up some length to Turner that time. Pashon was able to throw the brakes on and then still had a tough shot, but able to get it in. I thought for a second he was too far under the basket to get that one to go. And then uh, again, nice body control. We've said that about him a couple times tonight. Able to put that one up and in. Shawnee now with a two point lead. Owens, kick out, slapped away, and recovered by Shawnee, and a foul. The foul's going to go on at Cobain Owens. It'll be his third. And that was a great job by Tate Bender down here in the corner. Never saw the ball coming. He just read the player he was defending's eyes and just threw his hands up when he anticipated that pass coming through and was able to get a piece of it. 
So that puts Noah Payne with three fouls, Kobe and Owens with three fouls, Evan Engsman is still hanging in with two fouls. And Shawnee with the basketball. One possession game, 40 to 38 on the Web Insurance scoreboard. 5.43 remaining in the fourth quarter. And here's another thing to think about. You know, we've talked about the foul situation for St. Mary's a couple of different times throughout this game. But if this one stays relatively close, if Shawnee is able to get a few possessions ahead and St. Mary's has to start fouling, they're going to have to start thinking of who's going to do that fouling. That's a great point, Nate. And right now, St. Mary's with the great defense as they have forced another turnover and will try to make points off it, and Anksman does. Saint we are Mary. tied again at 40. Go ahead, and Nate. St. Mary's just doesn't want to have to worry about that. Late drain three-pointer by Pachon. No good. Lynch, double clutch shot. Can't get it to go. Berkey there and blocked by Turner. And a foul called. That will be on Turner, his second. Turner's got to be careful. He's a little animated down there, and the officials letting him play a little bit, letting him show some of that emotion, but the clapping of the hands and being animated, this is not a time where you want to get risk picking up that technical. A Metzger Financial Services timeout with 5.01 to go. We will take it as well. It's a tie game, 40-40. to We're back after this on WOSN. Back in, 5.01 remaining in the fourth quarter. Beckett Berkey at the line for a couple of Lee's famous recipe free throws. First one is up and in. So after missing his first four free throws, Beckett's now made back to back. This is the time, I mean, you don't ever want to miss free throws, but coming down through the, um, through the fourth quarter in, in the clutch, you want your best player to be able to put these in. Second least free throw around the rim and out. And we'll see how the teams continue to make adjustments as we get closer and closer to the end of this one. With the game staying relatively tight, just a one point lead for Shawnee. Here's Angstman. Long elite drain three pointer, no good. That was a tough shot by Angstman as Berkey was right there to put a hand in his face to be disruption. I still thought he had it too. He kind of did that, you know, run away like you you know it's going in. Here's Lynch in trouble. Payne knocks that one out of bounds. It'll stay with Shawnee. Lynch just kind of ran out of room. I don't think his initial intent was to get that down into the corner. Shawnee's fortunate to be able to keep this possession. Indian basketball. Trevick. Underneath, Beckett, the lead drain three-pointer is short. And the foul hands in the face of Alex Haney. That slinches third. First on the team. That's the downside of having a player like Dominant Lynch. He is so aggressive, he never stops playing. He's always going to be going after that basketball, trying to get turnovers, trying to get extra possessions for his team. But when you get like that sometimes, if you, know, if you get a little bit overly aggressive, uh, you can pick up the fouls, and that was already his third. Here's Payne cutting through, kicking back out. Turner has it, nice fake. Good ball movement, working the baseline, but bounced in into the hands of Nick Pichon. And Shawnee able to force a turnover. No one's got a little fancy there as he was trying to pass, went behind the back. And I don't think that was the intent. It was just he kind of got himself caught into the air and had nowhere to go with it. Bender having it, passing it up. Trevick, long elite train, three-pointer, knocks it down. Trevick Berkey with his second three-point shot it is such a smooth one, even with as deep as it was, puts his team up two possessions. Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will step away. It's a four-point Johnny lead here on WOSN.
Welcome back, our three-point sponsor tonight, Elite Drain Cleaning. Make Elite Drain Cleaning and water damage professionals your first call when you need water extraction, help with clogged drains, or carpet and upholstery cleaning. Find Elite Drains on Facebook. Back to a four-point lead for Shawnee, 44 to 40. Neither team has had a significantly large lead in this one. Shawnee's, their largest lead has been four points. St. Mary's has led by as many as eight. Here is an elite drain three-pointer by Steger. That one no good. And what you see is St. Mary's has gotten away from getting Jace Turner touches down low, and that's when this little bit of a scoring funk has happened. Bender cutting inside to Goldberry. Shawnee still working it up and in and having success. Their largest lead of the night, 46 to 40. Alex is a senior. He does a lot of good things for this team. Works tough on the inside. Hasn't scored since early in the first quarter, but put up two big points right there. Angstman with a long elite drain three-pointer. It is no good. Coach Hagemeyer not happy with that shot selection. As St. Mary's cannot panic. A lot of time left on this clock. It's only a six-point game. They have to find a way to get themselves back uh, to getting that ball to the inside, letting Jace Turner work one-on-one -on -one in space. I said, as we said before, and well, as you mentioned it, and we'll have a timeout. Metzger Financial Services timeout here on the floor. 30-second timeout, we'll keep it here. Shawnee has been able to build this six-point lead. They came into the quarter with a four-point lead, so actually that extra, the adding that extra two points there. But as you mentioned, the things that St. Mary's was doing that had success, working the ball down low and forcing turnovers. When they've relied on the three-point shot, it's great when it goes in, and every every coach will tell you that. They, they haven't had those go in, especially in this quarter, and Shawnee's starting to take advantage of it. Well, when you look at the second half, at least, you know, I mean, every, everything I keep number-wise is very unofficial <laughs> right. up here. So I, I, I could be wrong, but when you look at it, St. Mary's has yet to make a three-pointer here in the second half. And they didn't need to in that third quarter when they came back and they were they were able to close that gap and get tied up because they let Jace Turner do what he does best. He was working one-on-one, -on -one, mainly matched up against Alex Goldsberry, and he was getting the better of those matchups time and time again. But now they're trying to go back. They're chucking up the deep threes. They're going quick on their possessions, and they're going one and done. And that's not what has been successful tonight. There's no reason to get away from what was working. That's what seems to have happened here in the last couple of minutes. It's allowed Shawnee to build this six-point lead. Indians with the basketball. And can St. Mary's get back on defense and force some turnovers? And we'll have a kick there. You can see St. Mary's turning the pressure up right now. Shawnee just trying to pass out of trouble. They are fine with the clock continuing to move and just wind itself down here. And controlling the passing lanes is something St. Mary's has been good at tonight. Like They have been able to cause a lot of problems for passing the basketball. So if they can put pressure on that, continue to put pressure on that, you got to feel good about their chances to maybe get back and tie this one. Thought about the three-pointer here, and I would imagine Shawnee is not going to force a shot until they absolutely have to. And with a six-point lead, you can make the argument that they don't absolutely have to. And no, and this might be what they talked about in the huddle, is make them foul you. Like at some point, St. Mary's is going to have to start fouling. And that right there, though, is the one player for the Rough Riders, where if you're going to have him foul, you want him doing it. He still has all five of his. That's only his first of the night. And it's going to lead to another timeout on the floor. Metzger Financial Services timeout will take it as well. Six-point lead for Shawnee, 46-40. to 40. You're watching high school boys basketball action on WOSN. The Macarena blaring forth through Liberty Benton High School and... I'm having very unfortunate flashbacks right now. Six-point lead for Shawnee <laughs> over St. Mary's. St. Mary's would like to not have flashbacks of last year's district semifinal 
as a foul committed by Cobain Owens. That'll be his fourth. So this is the exact situation that we mentioned a few minutes ago. Was St. Mary's finds themselves down multiple possessions, and they're going to have to find ways of stopping the clock. Someone's going to have to foul. Who's that going to be? That time it was Cobain Owens, and he picked up his fourth. And that might be the order of business, although Bender gets away and puts it up and in. Yeah, when you're with that wide open underneath, you can't pass up the chance to put more points up on the scoreboard. An 8-0 run for Shawnee. And we'll have a foul, I believe, yes? Not a good foul. That's going to be the third on Beckett Berkey. Just got a little over aggressive that time. And just got a little bit of the arm. Berkey's third is St. Mary's. Needs to get something going here. Steger, lead drain three-pointer, no good. Lynch with the rebound and the foul. Brennan Steger came up over the top to get that rebound. With that foul, it's going to be the fifth of the quarter. So Shawnee is going to be able to walk down to the end of the floor the rest of this game to take some free throws. They're going to have a chance to ice this one. That's the second one on Steger. As you said, the opportunity for Shawnee to salt this one away. Dominic Lynch, the Lions, 67% for the season. First Lee's free throw, no good. This one is still close. Can't afford to miss up these free opportunities at points. And if you're St. Mary's, you're definitely not in a situation where you have to shoot the three. You can still work it down low and do some of the things that got you success. That least recipe. Chicken free throw is good. Nine point lead. And Owens is fouled. They got, they got Lynch. Lynch it looks That's like his yep. fourth. It's going to be his fourth. And it's not the worst foul except for the fact that it goes against Lynch and it's his fourth foul because if that one goes through, Kobe Owens, he had a, a clear look at the rim. Lynch is going to have to be careful though. I mean, there's still, St. Mary's is within striking distance, still a minute to go. You'd like to have that defensive aggression that Lynch brings to the floor. Here's a three-pointer by Haney, no good. And recovered by Shawnee for the moment. Fighting for it is Goldsberry, and he is fouled. And we'll see who they assess that on. I think that's against going to go against Turner, it looks Turner, like. indeed, yeah. So that's his third. Goldsberry showing a lot of strength to hold on to that one through a lot of traffic and a lot of contact before that whistle came. So Shawnee notched a 12-point win over St. Mary's on the 26th of January, and it is closing in on that ever so slowly. That first Lee's recipe, chicken free throw, no good. Both of these defenses have made an adjustment. That first game was a 69-57 win for the Rough Riders, so a lot less scoring in this one. Second lead, free throw, good. 10-point lead for Shawnee, 10-0 run for the Indians. Giving it up, Anksman, lead train, three-pointer, no good, but right there to clean it up is Payne and a timeout. Metzger Financial Services timeout cuts it down to an eight-point lead. And, you know, you've watched a lot of basketball at this point, and you get yourself into a pretty familiar situation where it's going to be somebody with fouls to spare. And if you look down the list, you've got Noah Payne, who's got a foul to spare and can stay in. Alex Haney's got a few. Jace Turner's got one. Brennan Steger's got a couple. Evan Engsman's got a couple. You have a couple guys that can foul a little bit depending who you go into, but it's going to be foul. Shawnee with chances at the line to salt this one away. Yeah, and what comes into play here too is, you know, that new free throw rule that I know everybody's talked about all year long. But if you look just in this quarter, Shawnee has gone to the free throw line twice because of fouls where it would have, in the old rules, would have been a one-in-one -one situation. They missed the front end of both of those free throw trips but yep. made the second. So that's two additional points that under the old rules they wouldn't have right now. And when you come into tournament playing games like this, that's really big. You're talking, it's a big difference when you look up there and it's only a six point difference compared to an eight point game. 
Certainly one of those things that will be talked is being talked about now and maybe talked about in the off season. I'm not suggesting anything's changing, but you like to know how these things are turning out. Meanwhile, that was the fourth foul on Jace Turner. And that'll put Lynch at the line and the first Lee's chicken, Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is no good. A big difference in a two possession game and a three possession game. As Lynch missed the front end of that one as well and then made it. So that's now three additional points. So it's just one of those things where it's been interesting to kind of watch and, and look at that and, and track that a little bit to see what differences have been in games this year compared to what they would have been under the old rules. Elite drain three-pointer by Evan Engstman is good. And it's March, so, you know, why not have a little madness to go along with this? Cuts it to a... Yeah, I think they Six put, point lead. Yeah, they put yeah, that up on the wrong side. They got 54-42. Yeah. It's 51-45. And over, someone from St. Mary's is happy to go over there and correct it as they make sure that is correct. We'll step away and take a timeout. 51-45. Shawnee, we're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back, 51-45. 26.6 seconds remaining. It's a six-point lead for Shawnee, and now can they play keep away for 22 seconds? There's a foul. That will be either Payne or Haney. Uh, we got a timeout, actually. So another timeout taken. You know, these are the situations, too, where we talked about Shawnee not having that traditional point guard can hurt them at times. You know that that pressure's coming. You know the trap is coming, and they're trying to pass it out, but it's going to their bigs. And then, you know, you end up in the hands of Tate Bender, and then the, the basketball is still a little bit too far down the floor than you'd like, and you don't want to lose that possession, so that will lead to this use of this timeout. And they only have one left now, but 20 seconds left to go. Still a lot of time, only a two-possession game. So, again, as we said, the situation hasn't changed a whole lot. Still looking for St. Mary's to foul. Shawnee will go to the line. Uh, they've been one, one for two their last couple trips. Are, if you're St. Mary's, are you still in kind of the mindset of we need a three-pointer? We need three-pointers at this point. Time's against us. Two to three possession game by the time we get the ball back. I mean, I think at this point, probably. Um, I mean, it is still just a two-possession game. So if you can get it up quickly and that lane's wide open, go ahead and take it. But there's only 20 seconds left to go. You can't waste too many other possessions at this point. you got to find ways to get you know, points and in, in, in quite a few of them um, as far as if you're looking at two compared to three. And they're going to have a foul. It's going to be an offensive foul. So a tough call as that is also going to take Lynch out of the game. That is it for Dominic Lynch. Well, that's one way to turn it around if you're a Rough Riders fan. So Alex Goldsberry will come in to replace Lynch, and it'll be St. Mary's basketball. So they get the turnover. They don't have to worry about a foul. They don't have to worry about a trip to the foul line. No time comes off the clock, and Dominic Lynch leaves the floor. There's a whole lot of good things that happen for the Rough Riders on that. I mean, if they can stroke a three-pointer here, it's a one-possession game. That's what they're going for. Anxman for three. No. Rebound. Tate Bender running and fouled. I think that's on Anxman, his third. And if you're Shawnee, you're also happy to see that it's Tate Bender going to that free throw line. As he's about as automatic as it comes for this team. Shawnee student section started chanting, it's all over. Like, uh, hold off on that, guys. Lee's famous recipe, free throw, up and good. Two possess three possession game now. Yeah, there's no reason to poke hold, that bear until, <laughs> until hold it's on a minute. time. Yeah, hold on a minute. Seven point lead. Second Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is good. Anxman brings it across, 10 seconds. Looking for the long elite drain three-pointer. That one high off the rim, no good. Rebound by Beckett Berkey with four seconds left. Berkey heading to the line. 
now, okay. about, now we can now the chance. Now Jerry you're gonna works. have the chance. You know, this is a tough game for or for Shawnee, and especially coming off of the game against Napoleon, that was an even tougher game. And this has really got it, gotten them ready because it's not getting it any easier. They're going to move on to play in that regional semis. And whichever team that they have to face, whether it be Shelby or Lexington, that is also going to be another very difficult, physical, tough um, you know, battle that they're going to have to have in front of them. And it's games like this, though, that is going to prepare them and let them know that they can win games like that. Shelby and Lexington also conference champions. Whoever comes out of that game facing what we're pretty sure is going to be Shawnee at this point uh, will be 23 and 2. Second least famous recipe chicken free throw is no good. Final seconds as Payne throws this up, and that'll do it. And the Shawnee Indians are heading back to Bowling Green. Another district championship for the Shawnee Indians. And I don't know that a lot of people would have had that lined up or marked down for them coming into this season, but this team has done a great job of growing and being able to win tough battles. Playing it through the Western Buckeye League, only having the one loss has really gotten them ready, and they've all been led by Beckett Berkey and what he's been able to do on the offensive side of things. We'll be back to wrap this one up. Your final 53-45 to 45 Shawnee winning the Division II District Liberty Benton District Championship. We're back to wrap this one up when we return on WOSN. Welcome back. Our post game for tonight, sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. The Shawnee Indians returning to Bowling Green. They win the Liberty Benton District Championship tonight, 53-45 to over St. Mary's. Patrick Hamler and Nate Garlock wrapping this one up, and this one was a, uh, a hard-fought battle all the way through in the end, though. Of course, Shawnee doing um, some key things. And, well, I'll, I'll let you get into the analysis a little bit more, but you saw Shawnee just kind of pull away in a lot of the same way they've done all this season. Yeah, and, then, you know, I think what's really important, too, especially tonight, was they got contributions from everybody who was on the floor. We saw Demobo Ojo come in and have a big, couple of big defensive plays. You saw all five starters able to contribute in some way, somehow. We know that the offense is going to run through Beckett Berkey. We know he's going to get his point. Trevick Berkey does a lot of the offensive stuff as well. He did that tonight. But everybody else contributed and came up big in spots when they needed it. And when you have a team that, that is that complete, that's how you're able to make runs like this. They needed that tonight against a very game a Shawnee, or excuse me, St. Mary's Rough Riders team. And at the end of the day, that's what ended up being the difference as they're the ones that are moving on to Bowling Green. The Rough Riders demonstrated, particularly a couple of guys on the team, that uh, they're pretty proficient and willing to put up the, the three-point shot. And as it turns out, when you are a team, you know that the saying goes, live by the three, die by the three. Uh, especially in the second half, those three-point shots just weren't falling for St. Mary's. And that turned out to be really one of the significant differences for them in this one. Yeah, absolutely. They went only only had one made three-pointer in the entire second half, and that was right towards the end of the fourth quarter with Angsman made one as they were trying to mount their comeback. They got away from what was working so well for them early in the second half, and it was Jace Turner going to the inside. And you got to give Shawnee a lot of credit for that. They were able to, you know, force that ball out, keep it from having an entry pass. They did a nice, nice job of clogging up those passing lanes. And, you know, I really think that ended up being the difference tonight because when Turner got the ball down low, especially when he's in those one-on-one -on -one matchups, he was absolutely just dominating down there and put up a lot of points when he did it. But as soon as Shawnee was able to force the ball out of his hands and kept it from being inside, the entire game changed. 53-45, our final tonight. Shawnee getting the better of St. Mary's, and we don't know exactly who yet as of this recording right now. Shelby with a nine-point lead over Lexington with about four and a half remaining in the fourth corner. If that holds, it'll be the Whippets taking on Shawnee, and Shelby has been a, uh, a, a force to reckon with this season. They're going to be 23, and whoever comes out of it 
And Lexington's a really good basketball team, too. So if they may have to come back and they win, it, it's going to be a 23-2 and two team undefeated in conference that Shawnee is going to go up against. And it's going to be it's going to be a tough battle for this Shawnee Indian basketball team. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely is, and that's and as it should be. As you move deeper into the tournament, these games should get more and more difficult. You know, but this Shawnee team is going to cause a problems for Shelby, just like Shelby will cause it for Shawnee. Shawnee has had a very difficult regular season schedule. They've had to play through a tough Western Buckeye League. You know, they have played um, some really tough teams. You know, LCC, they've played Lima Senior, they've played out of a Glandor. They've played a lot of big games on a, on a big stage and had to go through some adversity in those games. And, you know, you hate the cliche of, you know, well, we learn when we lose. But being able to play in those games and even with not necessarily coming out on top of all of them, they've been able to get better. And you have seen this team get better. You've seen them fight through adversity. You know, they had to, you know, in the district semifinals, they, that game was tight and it was close and they weren't on their A game, but they found a way to win. And when you're at this point of the tournament, being able to find a way to win is really a testament of the fortitude of the team that you have on the floor. The saying goes, you either win or you learn. And the Shawnee Indians have done a lot of both this season. Let's move on to the Stolly Hustle Award winner. Uh, check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. Plenty of guys eligible for this one as the Shawnee Indians celebrating their district championship on the court. But Dominic Lynch for Shawnee, the six-foot senior, gets the nod for the Stolly Hustle Award winner. Uh, you want to talk about hustle. Didn't stack, it didn't stuff the stat page, but that's not what this award is about. He was providing a lot of energy on the court, made a lot of key, play, key plays, and he fouled out, which is sort of a testament to his energy and him being all over the place, but uh, really just had a lot of uh, great plays that won't show up on your stat sheet tonight. No, and you know, and you know, let's be honest, this was kind of a um, career achievement award tonight for Dominic Lynch, right? You know, the senior, his last time, you know, being in a district final, everything at this point is a last time for Dom, and he's leaving it out on the floor. He wants to make sure when he walks away that, you know, he knows that he left everything he had on the floor, and he's done that his entire career. And tonight was no different. He got after it. We saw him getting after the 50-50 balls. We saw him make some nice shots underneath. He put himself in position to make plays. And with what he has been able to do and the minutes that he's given this team, you know, not just in this game, not just this season, but throughout his career, has shown, you know, that he is one of those guys that you can rely on night in and night out to do the dirty work, to do the little things, even if he's not always filling the stat page. You know, and like we said, he didn't necessarily get it done scoring tonight, but he is second on this team in scoring for the season. He, he can get it done on every part of the floor, and that's what makes him so valuable and very deserving of the award tonight. Collects is part of the net for the uh, district championship. Dominic Lynch, our Stolly Hustle Award winner this evening. That is going to wrap up our coverage from Liberty Benton High School. I we'll want to thank Megan Sherrick, Zach Keith for helping us out, Nick Fraley back at the ranch for putting this all together, and thank you for watching. One more time, 53-45, our final Shawnee triumphs over St. Mary's. For Nate Garlock and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Handler saying so long, everybody, from Liberty Benton.